been around the way. Y'all see it. Y'all see it.
y'all, who was y'all toughest cover ever? One individual. You gotta get, you gotta, you gotta take the L on it. Okay, I'll go first. Mine was probably, I've had a few like in college, but I would say the one I remember most is the second time I played Steven Adams at, mm. when I was at Winston and he was at Notre Dame Prep. And like, we were competitive with him last time. And I was playing center. So I was guarding his, his, you know, big, big ass. And like, the first game I had like, I had a nice little 15. I had a post up on him and everything. I was like, oh, I, I can, I can bang with him. But the second game, he destroyed us. Like, he made a dude on our team quit. Like this dude, like, cause, cause we had a small team, right? So I was the center. And then we had like a six, five. He was really like a, a three. He was like a shooter. And it might even be shorter than six, five, but he had to come in. Like I got in foul trouble. Cause he was, he was ready to play that game. And then he had to come in and try to guard Steven Adams. And our coach was yelling at him and he just like quit after the game. Like he came to the bench. <laughs> He was he was pissed off when our coach was yelling at him. He was like, "Yo, I quit," and he actually quit. Like he, that was the last time he played. Wow. So yeah, I would probably say that that was Stephen yeah. Adams and at Winston. I guess for me, it it probably when I was like a freshman in high school, I was still fat. I was probably like 235, and I was just when I was like starting to be a wing a little bit. So I started getting the circuit a little bit, and we played uh, Jalen Brown. We are actually in Chicago. Wow. And I mean, he didn't look anything special, so I was like, I got him, whatever. I was playing three for the first time, and he scored the first bucket, went by me, so okay, whatever. Second second time, nicks me, crossed me over, and I was like, damn. Third time, blew by me and dunked. I was like, timeout, coach called timeout, and he was like, all right, we gotta switch the match. I'm like, no, 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 I'm covering, I'm covering him. I was like, probably full, even though I was fat and slow, couldn't move. But, so I ended up covering the next play. Followed him probably like seven or eight times. They didn't call it. And I remember I was all hyped up. And he was like, he's like, good D. And I was like, no one in my head, I found shit. Out. That was terrible defense. But that, so that was probably the toughest in high school. And then in college, there's a guy named Bogdan. I think his last name is Blizzard. They played at Eastern Washington. And when I tell you, he scored in every single bite, every single person on our team, he scored in every single person. I think he at least had 30. Just spin moves, getting the paint, post ups. I remember it was the season I when I had an injury, and it seems I ended, actually ended up redshirt and had surgery, but I got in the game, it was like our first game of the year, and he just clean spun off me, laid me easy, right away. So, get him out. So, I mean, those, those, those two scenarios, I guess, are toughest for me. That's crazy. That's a crazy story that you went against Jalen Brown. Yeah. Now that's, to, to, to think that, and then he ended up being like, number three in his class or something like that. Uh, something, something big. We're gonna we're gonna get the video. I wanna look up the video of that guy. Well, I have the game. I was yeah. hitting like 40 foot threes. That was back when I was ISO guys. And I back up if I get a big on me. And then, you know, that big, the, when the bigs are like backing them like this, you're like, you, ooh, I know I got him. And knowing at that time in my life, I had zero handle. Like I couldn't handle the ball at all. I'd act like I was coming up. Yeah. And I'd just shoot a 35 yeah. footer. And pull up. And pull it and make yeah. it. So. No, that's. I was right in the tradition of being a wing, but that taught me I wasn't, I wasn't there yet. I need to lose right. a few more LBs. Right. Well, <laughs> well, I guess I guess the, the the transition to that to redeem the story is what what was y'all uh, best game in terms of like all right like I like there is no one touching me tonight. It doesn't matter who they bring off the bench or who they put on me or what type of scheme that they, the the coach is putting on defense. Like I am, I'm on one tonight. It wasn't even my favorite game. But like my best game where like I was scoring every time down was uh, against Central Connecticut State in college my junior year. And like before the game, like I had an issue like with my stomach, like my stomach hurt. And I was like, I don't even like, this, this hurts. Like I don't even know if I can play right now. Like I felt like I had to take a shit the whole, the whole time what? when I was in there. And then like I just got one play, I did like a slip and I, and I caught it, slammed it and one. And then I'm like, yo, my stomach still hurt, but I, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. And then that game, I was just hitting, I was hitting threes, I was uh, getting post-ups. So I'd probably say that game in college. And then also, I could say the game when I was with Cheshire, and it was a tough year for me that year. I wasn't playing that much. Coach was, you know, not playing me a whole lot, giving me a lot, a lot of opportunity. But we had some injuries, and we go down to Bristol, 
and I was cooking. I was cooking. I was hitting threes. Another game I had a dunk. Any game I have a dunk, it's like I'm really cooking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I had a nice little dunk. Uh, you know, we, we ended up losing that game because I didn't really touch the ball in the fourth quarter for whatever reason. But, you know, I, I was I was cooking that game. I had a nice little, like, 18, 13. And that game really got me my next contract. I was, was just going to say that. Bristol because they saw me cooking them. And then they were like, you know, next summer they were like, yeah. Well, oh, you might be good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, yeah, probably those two games. Yeah. For me, it's probably definitely my senior year in high school where we played Bridgeton uh, and Nepsack in, in our conference, and I had 45. Uh, hit a bunch of threes. Which I think I had 23 at halftime. It was one of those moments where I had made like a floater, and I was r running back, and I was like laughing, like smiling. I was like, damn, I never scored this much in my life ever. I was going to bench. I didn't even know. Like usually, like you get a, you can get like 20. That kind of counter, like oh, I have like 20. I, I legitimately had no idea how much I had. And I got to the bench with like six minutes left in the game. Coach goes, and our stack keeper goes down to Aaron. He goes, Aaron, you know how much you had? I said, no, nah, I don't know. Like, what, I have like 35, 38? He goes, no, nah, you had 45. And I was actually pretty mad at that point because I had missed six free throws. Mm. Could have had a 50 ball. <laughs> I could have had a 50 ball. And then um, last summer, 2019, we played in Europe for Malta. We played Iceland. I had three points in the first quarter. Wasn't playing well, and I got really mad. Uh, tried to dunk on somebody, like dislocated my elbow, which I found out later. Not that I sprained it; it was pretty stupid. I mean, but I ended up having like 30 in the last, in the second half, and I was just taking crazy shots. I did like a slip and slide three. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a, it was really crazy. Like, and I had a terrible game, so I was like on the bench in crunch time, which was reasonable. You know, right. even though that like I'm one of the you know better players on the team, like one of the. The, you know, leader, older guys. Right. I've been on the team for a few years. I was having a terrible game. They kind of were hacking me, kind of took me out of it. I wasn't getting many calls. So I was on the bench reasonably. So I was just watching from the bench and the shots he was hitting were crazy. Like, In my head, I was like, I'm Kawhi. I was just, I was just, I was right after the Raptors won their run. So I just take one dribble to the right and shoot it. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting to a spot, I'm shooting it. Yeah. I'm jabbing, I'm stepping back, I'm shooting it. That's... Uh, I, I was just, I remember that. I was like, we were down by 22. Came and they back from down 20. And I had close, I told, the, I told the Iceland coach, I said, you messed up, <laughs> you let me get going. Yeah. And then, I mean, we ran out of gas and we ended up losing, but that was, un I mean, they had nobody for us. That's funny, like, minus your high school game you're talking about, like, all the games I was talking about, I've, I've like, watched, like, your, 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 um, the Central Connecticut one. Yeah. I watched, I think we post, I posted a bunch of the highlights from there. Yeah. Back, w back when you were uh, still in school. But it was funny, like, watching, like, I don't think we ever like talked about it. like I obviously watched the games I like I posted and stuff like that I don't think we ever like talked about it like in person like yo like this happened blah blah, blah. Like, how, like how was that you know what is the funniest teammate teammate story that you have uh, so my freshman year we went to Spain with Northwestern we took, a, we took an international trip so my first taste of college basketball was in Spain uh, I remember I was like super nervous. I wouldn't shoot the. I had a couple open threes I didn't shoot. I was super nervous. And then got going, whatever. We, we played well. And uh, we ended up losing this team by two points. We should have won, but you know, first game, new group. And we get to the locker room. And our senior captain, <laughs> Alex Ola, he's probably going to laugh about this too, is we get to the locker room. And we're all down. We're like, we just lost like to Team Spain. We shouldn't lose it. Like, we're a high major Division one program. We shouldn't lose to these guys. They weren't the top team in Spain. There was like. So old guys who know how to play basketball pretty much. And we're all down. And Ola comes in and goes, he goes, he's a big Romanian guy. He goes, what are you doing? Be happy, we won. It's okay, we won. <laughs> goes, what are you, why are you guys mad? We won the game. And we're all just like, yo, what? I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say no, I was a freshman. I just got there. I'm like, what's this dude talking about? He's it's crazy. And then I remember our other captain, my boy Sanjay goes, Alex, we lost. And as soon as he said that, Alex's face was like, like so shocked and coach comes in and goes, Alex, sit down, what are you doing? <laughs> and he's just there. Coach is like, it's all right, we just lost our first game, it's all right. And he's just like not tuned in at all, like looking at the wallet, like confused. Like. <laughs> it's hard because I don't want to put nobody on the spot. And then I feel like a lot of my I, funny stories are like off the court too. So I'll give you a funny one about me individually. I, are you talking about the Montenegro shit? No, that's a, that, that, was a, that, that wasn't funny to me. You can tell that. That, <laughs> that wasn't funny to me. That was, that funny was to hilarious. Me. Um, so he can tell that after. Uh, I was going to say when I was in high school, like, this is, I mean, I feel like I've told the story a bunch of times. My coach always tells the story. Uh, but we're playing Dedham at Dedham at New North. I was at New North. 
And another thing, another time where I had a stomach issue. This has been a frequent theme in my life, you know what I'm saying? I like food, you know, sometimes I go a little overboard with the food. And I had a stomach issue for whatever reason, so uh, I felt like I had a shit in the whole first, the whole first half. And I played through it, but I knew like once we got to once we got to halftime, I was like, yo, I gotta go, I gotta go. So we're, we're playing dead. They're not really good. Uh, coach Conley, our coach, he's he's pissed because it's like a close game, and they're not really good. We're not really playing well. You know, we're a powerhouse in that conference. And so we go in. I go immediately to the bathroom. And I, you, you can, I mean, you could hear it. You know what I'm saying? I, I was going, and my coach is like yelling, right? He's like, "Where's Tevin? Tevin? Tevin?" And I'm like, "I'm here, coach." <laughs> from, from the stall. From the stall. Like he was facing that way, and I'm in the stall, like behind him. And he couldn't help but like break the ice. Everybody's yeah. laughing. Yeah. Uh, and we end up winning that game easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was probably one of the funniest stories that have happened with, with the coach too. He always tells us. You can tell the Montenegro story. If you want. I mean, it's kind of funny. It, it, it's, it wasn't funny in the moment, but I, looking back at it, like I, I have a video. Wait, I think, I think y'all told me. I, think I have, a, I have, a, I have a video of it. It's hilarious. Uh, we're, we're losing by 15. It's the last game of our tournament. We played four games in four days. We're, we're dead exhausted. And end of the game, Tevin's in. Other team's driven the clock out. Probably like, what, it's like 15 seconds left in the game. We're losing. Down 15. Game's over. We get the, the, the other team still has to get the ball over. So he's just like hanging in the backcourt. And he starts like dribbling up really like nonchalantly, like just brings it up, like just like like Lottie Dottie. They didn't even try to like rush it over and like just hold it. And Tevin like stops him right before half court and goes like this, like so it's like hands up, like this. So he he's like this in his stance. And the guy just like keep going about his business. And Tevin like pickpockets him <laughs> with his left hand, goes and gets it. So now he already disrespected him once. And in their country, we're in Montenegro. Yeah. Alright, first of all, I mean, who knows what goes on there, but we're in Montenegro, he steals the ball, and now he's got the lane. Yeah. So I'm like, there's no way, I'm like right behind him, there's no, no way Tevin's gonna score this, come on, like, he knows better. And, and he just dribbles like really like 50% to the hoop. And now there's a guy underneath their basket, and he's like, he's like, you're gonna let him go or whatever, and Tevin just kinda like, you know, lays the ball up. And then, now we got problems. Cause now they, they don't, their whole team, kind of collapses on Tevin on the court, pushing him, like, what are you doing, man? Like, what's wrong with you, this and that? I'm trying to defuse the situation, like, yo, chill, chill. Like, yo, it's just two points. Like, like let them live, y'all won. Like, I'm just trying to fuse it. And I'm trying to crack jokes to the dude who's really mad at Tevin. Right. And now, now the game ends, and now their coach is on Tevin, and now the whole team's on Tevin. I'm standing there laughing, like, trying to get the dude right here, and Tevin's behind there. I'm going to break it down for you. This is what happened. So we down, we lose, and whatever. But I didn't want to stop playing. It was the last game of the tournament. You know, and they was talking, telling me this whole thing about point differential and placing and all this stuff. Plus, I want my stats. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, so, it wasn't even keeping so, stats, so, really. Because all that, that's all they care about they're, Europe. Is, I mean, is, they, is, they only kept stats, but that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They're all they care about Europe is stats, stats, stats. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to get my 20-whatever. You know what I'm saying? If they're going to let me. So I went there. Like, not, not aggressively at all. And this man just dribbled real slowly. Let me play. Like, I was like this. And I just went like that. He let me steal it. Like that. I grabbed it. I said, okay. Now, if I was trying to be really disrespectful, I would have went and slammed it. Because I had the whole lane. Yeah. But I was just like, all right, let me dribble to the basket. If they step in front of me, I'm not even going to try to score. But they didn't step in front of me. So I was like, all right, let me get my two points then. I got my two points. The clock tick ticked off. I felt the dude slap me in the back of my afro. Another dude pushed me all around me. And I'm like, yo, what, what is going on right now? And so then, yeah, they're pushing me, dude's pushing me. He's trying to break it up, other dudes are trying to break it up. Then, the, the, the best dude, the real good dude, the fat dude, <laughs> he was cool. Yeah. He was he, he was trying to defuse the situation. He was like, okay, yeah, I understand. The coach was kind of being a jerk, but whatever. But it was kind of crazy for me to do because we were in their country. But, man, whatever, man. I still went out that night. You know what I'm saying? We had a good old time. <laughs> no, no, issues, no issues. It's all love, you know? <laughs> like, there was no problems at the end of the day. You told me this story. Yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, just what not to do. But yeah, yeah, things not to do in foreign yeah, countries. Probably, probably wasn't the smartest, yeah. smartest thing to do, but I did it. <laughs> Obviously, you guys, brothers. Have you all ever played against another set of brothers that were 
formidable as opponents, like good. At the same time? At the same, like, at the same time, yeah. Maybe we put, um, oh, no. No, not, not at the same time, dude. Have we? We, we would have busted him up. Oh. I think it would have been a thing in our head. Really you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah that's, like, that's I don't what think I was at the like. Same time. Like, I've definitely played against brothers on the same team individually. Yeah, but not. But not, because it probably would have been a thing. You you want to ISO with Kemba Walker? Uh huh. He got five seconds. He got ten ISOs. How how, how many stops you get? Ten. Yeah. Out of ten. Or Kemba. A missed shot is a stop. A missed shot is a stop. No help. No help. It's just me and him on the court. There's yeah. no one else. Is there like a crowd? <laughs> like a kid, like yeah, what's uh, a foul? A foul is a non-stop. You, you, you at the George's house. Oh, okay. okay. You, 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 we're at my house. Yeah, yeah. We're at my house. Total stops. Realistically, I'm getting two stops. That's what I was thinking. Too. I'm getting two stops. I was thinking off misses. Honestly, I'm thinking the first one because he's gonna he's gonna go light, and he's not gonna realize I'm you know super aggressive hacker. <laughs> And he's not gonna call it. So, oh, that's a stop. And then like he's gonna get mad, you know. And then he'll score the next few. But he's gonna—he's not gonna hit nine in a row. At least I don't think, you know. And especially the way I play, it's gonna be—it's gonna be a little bit of a, It's gonna be a little. Uh, not saying my physicality is gonna bother uh, a world-class athlete. Yeah. But you know, if you hit someone's wrist hard enough, yeah. And no one—no one's there to. You know, call it. I don't think that's... That'd be, think that's, that'd be interesting to see how many... How many you get? Me? You gotta miss a couple, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta give me one or two. I think, I think two. It's, uh, yeah, five, it's five, five seconds. If you just had me on an island with, like, unlimited dribbles... Oh, unlimited dribbles. I don't know, man. No, it's five unlimited, seconds. Though. Unlimited... Yeah, five seconds. Yeah, I don't know. I'm... I'm skating. <laughs> for a, for unlimited a, dribbles? There's no way. For, for a little bit. Yeah, I'm really interested to hear you answer this. You gotta pick the, the five players to win a, a street ball tournament in the hood. You only got five five picks, five best. Like from where? From anywhere or? In the NBA. Oh, in the NBA, five, like street ball. Street ball. Street ball. Outside. Outside. And it's like a five on five game? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I don't know. Shady refs, all that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> That's tough. No help defense. You, you gotta be attached to a man, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think they beat a dope boy and Mikey. Not in Boston. Not in Boston, man. I, I think I, I, I don't know. For you some still reason. Braun? Huh? You still, you're still picking Braun? Is Braun in there? I might have to. Just because of size, you know? He might be the biggest dude I pick. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I, I mean, despite the performance and the. Yesterday, I'm picking Russell Westbrook. <laughs> like that, that's someone like I I, I want in that area. Uh, probably Westbrook. Um, shit, I think I'm picking J.R. Smith. That's that's like the ultimate like. I right, like we're gonna, we're gonna bring him. Um, and we just ran. I don't know. Who would I round that up? He's a guard. He's a tough guard. He's gonna foul the whole time. Yeah. But not complain to the. Well, I guess complain to the ref is part of the tournament. Yeah, but that's why I picked Russ because it's like. I'm not gonna rely on a lot of shooting. He's just gonna go to the rim every time. And no help, like that's that's different. Like I think Russ is getting, Russ is averaging, Russ is averaging a dunk per five positions. He has to, like outside, no help. Yeah, that's how that's how my mind is thinking. So what I got, I got, I got Russ, I got JR. You said Braun. Braun, I'll pick Braun. Um, I might have to drop JR. I might have to pick up Kyrie. Interesting. I might have to pick up Kyrie because he's gonna, you know, he's gonna go to the rim. He can shoot a little bit. That's his element. And one on one, it's that's a hard check. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go big and shooter. I think shooter. I'm, I'm picking up Clay because I because I can rely on him to the one on one. We're outside now. It's windy. Oh uh, no, nah, he's he's not down. Still, he's still I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't think it matters to him. And he grew up in. Where he grew up in? Like Portland. Oregon? He's a, he's a West Coast guy. Yeah, yeah, so he plays outside. He plays outside. Yeah, I, I think I'm going with Clay just because, like, that's that's solid, man. No, that's solid. Um, I don't think I would go with AD. You're not picking Lance Stevenson? So, so that was, it was between Lance or JR, but I uh -huh. dropped him and I got to pick up Kyrie. And then, uh, 
and then uh, who's my big? I, I just need someone out there to like muscle, just muscle. Trez? Yeah, someone like Trez. I was thinking uh, Stephen Adams just didn't bully people. I don't, I don't know if I want Stephen Adams in that environment. He's too polite. He's not you know what I mean? Really? Like that, 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 that's a, that's a whole like uh, characteristic. Yeah, it, it would be someone like Trez. It would be someone like Trez. It'd be it, interesting if the NBA had to like go in that direction instead of bubble play outside, but in all the games outside <laughs> in that environment. On concrete. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Million dollar knees on concrete. That's crazy. <laughs> that would be wild. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. But I think I'll go with that five. Just off the top. Just how I would, like, program it in my head. Yeah, I, th I think that's... I think, I think we're winning some games with that. The hood, the hood has to win. The hood that you're playing in <laughs> has to win. It's like, it's rough to get thrown, man. Yo, facts. I know, I, like, the, I, one year in BNBL, a ref got shit. I, I think it was, like, in the... It's, like, in the fence. Like, at the park. Yeah, they said a ref got chased out the park. Well, that's great. My parents chasing like refs. Nah, he's gonna pay me to ref one of those turns. Nah, I don't know. They asked me, they asked me all the time, like, yo, you wanna ref in this? I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't ask the amount. I don't ask, I don't ask like who's there. I just know where it is. And I'm just like, no, I'm not showing up to that. Like, yo, you wanna, you wanna ref at Washington Park? <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> Every single time. You asked me that with that location. That's a no. Bro, Every I'm, single time. I never want to ref again, bro. I'm done with it. I did that one zero gravity tournament. Oh, yeah. The yeah. zero gravity nationals in Malden. <laughs> He's talking <laughs> about that. <laughs> imagine, imagine you like, yo, we won nationals. Where was it at? Malden. Malden, Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, we went to Malden for nationals. <laughs> we went to Kelly's Rose Beach down the street. <laughs> To celebrate. That's a, that's a, that's a nasty national. Yeah, no, that's a nasty. That's a, that is for certain a bro, nasty I'm national like eight tournament. Games in a day, bro. And I'm just like, I'm trying to be a good ref, but it's hard when you, they just yeah. slave labor in you. And then you got dudes like coaches really getting on you. And I'm like, come on, bro. Like, I'm, I don't even do this. Like, I just put on a shirt. I just got the shirt from Dix. <laughs> like, chill out, bro. No, zero, zero gravity nationals in Malden is nasty. Eight games in one day is nasty, which is unfortunately common. I had like a parent yell like a racial slur at me. I was like, yo, what is this? <laughs> they, be, they be really mad. It was like, a travel. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want? They be really mad. You got, the, you got the parents on you, and then you got the coaches on you. Yeah, and then you got the kid. You got like 12 year old kids like <laughs> sucking their teeth at you, pointing at you, like, yo, you suck. I'm like, what? <laughs> Like I'll never, I was never as bad as you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, that might be me one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, listen. And then you realize how it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's it doesn't matter. I, I appreciate the game for what it is. I appreciate the refs for who they are because it's bad refs too. But like, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, but you need them. You, I couldn't imagine a game. Call your own fouls. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Imagine I, that. No, they, they, there's been AAU tournaments like that. Like refs don't show up, and you gotta. Yeah, call your own fouls. Like it was like on the news and all that. It was on like, like it showed up on like. Yo, Twitter yo, yo, you know, like no, you gotta shoot for that, bro. <laughs> yeah, or just no, like it's just it's just a wild concept. It's just a wild concept. Like I don't know, like, and that's the problem. Like when you, I guess you don't you don't pay the rest what they deserve, mm -hmm. and like they it's less incentive for them to do a, a good job. Like yo, is it? You turn around like yo, I'm only getting, you know what I mean? And then like. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to do a good job. I just yeah. didn't. I don't have no formal training. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. a basketball player, so I know the rules. But it's like I don't have no formal training. Yeah. And then it's like, fam, I want the money, but do I really need it? And it's like you yelling at me like I'm a scrub when I play yeah. professional basketball. Like right, we right, could, right. I could take this Man, off. We could check up. We could check up right nose. now. You know what I'm saying? Like I've, I've, I've played this for years, and you over here yelling at me about your kid traveling, which he did, <laughs> like, yeah. or your kid, you know, missing a layup because you think he got fouled when. Yeah. The worst are the dad coaches that coach their kid, and you can see them like trying to like get their kid like all the shine. And every time you call something on their kid, they go nuts. Like coaching against it and refing against it is equally frustrating. Yeah. You're like, yo, you're setting that kid up for failure. Like that kid thinks this is the this opportunity is present every team you go to when, when it's not. Like no, little Johnny sucks, and little Johnny, little Johnny is gonna sit his ass on the bench because. 
five other players are better than him. They weren't coddled their whole life. Yeah. You know? Happens that, quick, too. Yeah, I, I just think, yeah. I think. At what point did you know, like, basketball is my path? Like, that's my life. At what, at what point did you have a, did you get a moment or you are you just here now? Like, I just, all I've known. Yeah, I think I think it's just a, I think, I think it's the, the latter. Um, just like a lot of uh, various sequences in my life, mm. like moments in sequence that like led to like today. Like there, there was a lot of points where, I mean, you, you hit a lot of like, you know, you hit a lot of uh, forks in the road. Like yeah. there was opportunities for me to work really cushy, like office jobs where I wouldn't have done anything. And I would have been a regular zombie or a drone getting on the train every day with a, with a suit and, and sneakers on so I could walk and then some dress shoes in my book, book bag. Yeah. I would have had a cushy, you know, like uh, uh, cushy benefits and all that, but I would have been miserable. And I did work some of those jobs and um, I, I literally like quit jobs, like without like a two week notice, nothing. Like I literally, would, yeah, I'm not coming in today. You're like, oh, okay, you you feeling, feeling sick? I was like, no, I'm just never coming back. <laughs> like I've, I've done that. And it's just, you know, it's terrible for my resume. Yeah. But like, I just knew like, I think every time I'm in the gym, to be honest. Like people get like, like today when we were in the it's gym. Like, it's like when you, when you hear that ball bounce, like especially with COVID around, like the yeah. first time I like got into a gym and I heard like the ball, I was like, yo, like this is, it felt weird because COVID, don't get me wrong, but yeah. like, it's just uh, like a different feeling. And it's interesting you like talk about that because Kind of our whole lives, we've been big. I, I'm six eight, he's six seven, or yeah. six eight, whatever. How tall he is? I'm, I'm six eight with shoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the wingspan? Tell me. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, six yeah. six <laughs> ten and a half. It's bad though. But uh, <laughs> but like we we've been big our whole lives. So like obviously like I chose basketball at a certain point over different sports. But I was always kind of big, and it kind of was a path that chose me. And I I always loved the game, but it was yeah. like it's something that was kind of made for me in a sense because of my body type and. It's interesting, like you, you like just the love of the game, and it's, it affects different people at different like sections of their lives. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's always it's always an interesting like thing to me when people really fall in love with it and re really choose like that's for me. Like I, I chose it now, now like it helped out six eight and it kind of chose me. But like it was, right. came a point in my life where like my sophomore freshman year, I was like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a, a bunch of six eight people walking around who have stopped playing basketball. Right. Because right. it, it gets tough. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. It gets tough. You get to a certain level, it's like. You can't just be here because you're six eight. Yeah. Or, or they still play and they're freak athletes and make millions of dollars. Yeah. They don't love it. But that's a different. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole. Yeah, that's, that's a whole. Yeah. That's that's a whole change. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I I agree. I agree with like uh, everything y'all saying and you know it, it's it. Yeah, you could say yeah you're six eight, but we know like I've I've come across six eight dudes that I can't like I don't know if I can get them better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like as much as I like study this game, like I was like oh this kid. This, ge this game isn't going to work out for this guy. This guy has to play volleyball. Oh, this guy has to be, you know, yeah. like he has to work at like Home Depot and they're not going to ask him for a ladder. You know what I mean? Like nothing wrong with it. But like that, that's, that's the life. I don't know. For me, like I, it's just that. Like every time, especially now with COVID, like I was like, yo, when we were, we were in the prep for like four months, like I was like, like I was like getting like anxiety, like for the first time in my life. Like I never felt this way. And then like I'll, when I finally got onto the court, when I, when I finally got onto the court, like, yo, since since June, since June, whatever, like, whatever, June 22nd was when I first got back on the court with, uh, with, 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 with like, uh, the kids and stuff like that. I, I've gone, like, I've gone six to seven days a week, like, like, hours on hours each day. Because I know, like, if, th if, this, if this gets shut down again, I know I'll at least know, like, I did everything I could leading up to it. Because all I thought about when we were in shutdown, in lockdown, in quarantine, was damn, like, look, all those days that I took off, and I don't really take days off, but those days that I did take off, I'm like, I should have never, t like, there was no reason I took those days off. Now, I'm like, I'm in full, full mode, like, right now, I think I'm on, like, 28 days straight, like, no days off. It's like you're on crack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hey, love it. That's what is, it is. is. That's what the is, game is. This is the neighborhood to say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the... This is the part to say that. But that's just like, I mean, that's the love I've, I've always seen ever since I've known you is that like your love of the game and like how, how much you study film and stuff like that. And so I hear you express that. I mean, it makes a lot of sense and it's just like a drug. I mean, yeah. why, when people don't understand like, why do you love basketball? It's like sometimes it's just a drug. Like, you, yeah. it's like when the NBA came on, it's like I, I was glued to my seat. Like I, I had to watch basketball again. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I mean, it's like, 
I wouldn't have been mad if, if they said they, they didn't want to play. You know, if yeah, all of them were no, like, well, we're, we're not going to play. Like, I was totally for that. Yeah. But if they're going to play, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm on the side of, like, I was on the side of, like, maybe they shouldn't play. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. But if they're going to play, I'm going to watch it just because you love it so much, you know? Yeah. Right. No, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, th I think, I think, you know, on that, on that note, like, yeah, no, I, I think, I think that love, like, the, the addiction to it, I think it's it's every it's the, it's the rewards that it's brought me. I think you know what I mean. Like like I wasn't blessed with height, you know, or or athleticism, you know what I mean. Um, but you know, great great wingspan for my height, you know, not not bad. But I, I learned how to play. Like I learned how to do like some stuff on the court, and like visually it looks good. And then I was able to break it down. Like I, I've always been pretty good with words and explaining things. And I just mesh those two things together to, all right, visually this is how it looks, and then, like from a, like verbally I can, I can explain things, and then, you know, I started realizing people picked that stuff up, and then like I think as a coach, I don't think there's anything more rewarding than helping people grow through the game. The game ends like one day the ball stops bouncing for everybody, sure. but seeing like my former players, like. They have kids now, they're raising families, they're, like, they're buying homes, they're getting married, they're getting great jobs, you know? And um, I, I look at that and I'm like, yo, that's that's the end goal. It's, it's not it's not how far they go with the ball, it's, it's how far they go in life afterwards, you know? And, and I don't know, like me seeing it, being around for so long and seeing it, seeing the results, I think, I can't stop. Like at, yeah. at this point, yeah. can't stop. And I got like this, I got this bum ass niece. Like she thinks she's good. <laughs> yeah, she's getting there. She's all right. But like, she's nice. She's yeah, nice. yeah. Give me a problem. Yeah, Give but problem. but like. Now I do remember when she did suck though. She yeah, was yeah no, she was trash. <laughs> she was <laughs> trash. She didn't even have like basketball shoes. I think she played with like some free runs and a Mountain Dew T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, but you know, getting free education, uh, getting a free education and. Getting it at the best like academic institutions you could have, possibly, and even just the schools you're in now, like putting kids in that situation, uh, especially like where I'm, where I'm from, like just getting away from like getting away from the rest of the neighborhood, or you know it could be in the neighborhood, but the rest of the people and like what their mindset is to be here. A lot of the mindset here is like you know like what do, what do I make? Yeah, oh, I'm gonna make this hourly and eventually. Boom, 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 and he's like, they don't even think about their worth, you know what I mean? Because no one ever teaches them. So, 